Right, shall we get started? Yeah? Yeah. It's, yeah, it's about time. So welcome to Group for Drupal 8. Um, I'll start with introducing myself. I'm Christian van der Ende. I work at Decent, which is a UK-based company. You probably all know. I mean, look at all the people here with the hoodie and stuff. Um, I come from Antwerp, Belgium, um, which is like the most awesome city on mainland Europe. So um, I'm happily married. I've got a really awesome cat called Django. And there's this one thing that I would like to mention is that I'm a highly sensitive person, so speaking in front of you would freak me out. And this is the first time that I'm actually speaking in front of an audience, so that could really freak me out. So if something goes wrong, like I get a panic attack or whatever, don't worry, I'm not having a heart attack, just I thought I should mention it. <laughs> so um, what is group about? Group is a management tool which sounds boring, so the next slide will, s will say something different. So, um, it, group, it allows you to group content together following a specific set of rules. It allows you to grant users permissions for a small section of the site. And it allows you to control access to specific pieces of content, uh, most generally notes. Um, so what about OG? That's a question everyone has on their mind right now. Yeah? Um, everyone in the room probably knows OG, organic groups. It's another module that sort of does the same thing that group does except it's usually frustrating to use. Um, but I'm not going to bash OG, that's bad karma. I've met Amitai in person, he knows my face, so I don't want him to beat me up next time I walk into him um, at Drupal.com. Yeah, but still, he's Israeli, he could have all that combat training and stuff, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, it's bad karma, and by bad karma I mean I probably couldn't take him on, so. Um. So I'm just quickly going to list what I didn't like about OG, what made me create group like a few years ago um, in December, and the group 7 version took me two years to make because I did it on my own time. This took me three weeks, to, uh, three months to make because Decent allowed me to work on it during company time, which is awesome. Um, so what I didn't like was it uh, that it repurposes existing entities, more on that later, um, and its groups can overall configuration, uh, hence the word organic. For their use case, that may be cool, but I want to provide a tool that is solid and that gives you get a guarantee that it will work the way you defined it to work and not have users on the group level just, you know, go with, like, screw your rules, I'm doing my own thing, so I don't want that. Um, all of organic groups' magic is based on who has what fields. So th they have a few special fields, and if they're attached to something, that means they're a group, um, or that you can put something in it, and stuff like that. Which really got me confused at first because I started adding those fields myself instead of through the OG UI and then everything went to shit. So, yeah, whatever. So that's my last point. The user experience wasn't really great. But again, I'm not going to go into further detail because, you know, haters going to hate. But I thought this was more appropriate seeing as we're in London. So um, I do hope you're no longer using those types of bicycles. So <laughs> must be really uncomfortable. Um, so what's group's approach? So I said about uh, home repurposing stuff. So um, this is a story about happiness of content. And, you know, imagine, by the way, those guys are flurps. Um, we sort of invented them, and I named them, and I really like that name, so those guys are flurps. So suppose all flurps go to the Drupal Content College before they get, you know, a job on a website. And they all follow a specific major. Some of them try to become nodes. Some of them try to become users. Some of them try to become taxonomy terms. And they all have, you know, this vision of them being that. They really want to be that. So come graduation day, they're all really excited. They, you know, can go to a website to work for them as a node or as a taxonomy firm and they're really excited about doing that and most of them succeed, most of them actually get a job but some of them don't. Some of them aren't recruited to be a node or aren't recruited to be a user but they're told that they're groups and they're like what the hell's going on? I, I studied to become a node or I studied to become a user and now you're telling me that I'm a group? What's that? I don't know how to be a group and then someone tells you yeah you know what We'll just give you some tools that allow you to be a group and just, you know, be on your way. But that doesn't make them happy. You look at them. The rest is happy, and those are two sad flirts. So what group does is it fixes this. It makes the flirts happy again. So it allows them to go to college and actually major as a group. So from the get-go, they learn 
what it's like to be a group, what they should be doing. And that actually makes them happy again. So when graduation day comes, there's happy graduates all around. And if there are websites recruiting flirps to become a group, they can actually recruit those two flirps with a G on their shirt. So that would really satisfy them to do what they want to do. So what are the takeaways? That group, groups do what they were meant to do all along. They study to become a group, so they get to do that. Uh, we don't touch other entities, and I don't mean that in a sexual way whatsoever. It's just, I just realized that because I'm Belgian and we have history and yeah, whatever. Um, so, flirp should be happy. Um, one, one minor note is that um, this has all been really abstract, but uh, for the developers in the room, when I say groups do what they were meant to do all along, this means that a group is a dedicated object. It's an entity in Drupal 8. So, you're no longer... Um, you know, having a node that's a group and then have to call all these weirdly named functions on that node because that node isn't actually meant to be a group. So now we have this group object and you can just call methods on it and it does what it needs to do. So let's have a look under the hood. I'll try not to be boring. Um, so groups have group types and group types are like content types for nodes but for groups. That's the easiest way to explain it. So what the content types do, they allow you to uh, field nodes of a specific type. So articles can have different fields. Well, group has the same thing. You can have different group types. They can all have different fields. But they can also have different permissions and available content. More on that later. But that means that you can have a whole rule set for one type of groups and a different rule set for another type of groups. And all groups of that type inherit that. So there are no per group overrides. It's just one set of rules that you define as a site builder and that gives you the guarantee that everything will work the way you intended it to work because no user can by accident just break stuff. Um, so when it comes to adding content to groups, a uh, group tells two stories. It tells the story of why or how, why or how content is inside a group. So for instance, when you have members in a group, they're actually putting user entities in a group. But you don't really care about, you know, shielding off access to those users or whatnot. You care about why or what, uh, why or how that user is inside the group. So I have the example of a gaming portal. This is a great example, and um, I'm a gamer, but not, I mean, I, I don't really game all that often. But I saw this website w uh, for gaming plans where um, you sign up with one account, and then they have, um, like, portal sites for all different types of games, but they all work with your one account, right? Now suppose that those portals are groups. So you have this group uh, type for a shoot 'em up and you have this group type for an RPG. <coughs> then you, um, you want actually different data for uh, people joining one of those gaming clans because for a shooter you may be interested in how well they can teabag someone when, they, when they've killed them or whatever, and for an RPG, uh, how well they role play. Um, so this is a great example for that, because you actually care about the person in your clan, not, not their account. You don't want to know what their email address is. You don't want to know what their username is that they signed up to the website with. You don't want to know their date of birth, for instance. You just want to know, if you're joining my clan, what's your gamer tag? and how good are you? Stuff like that. So that is the why or how. But group also tells a story of what. So in this case of members, you wouldn't really care about what's being put inside your group, but that also happens. So what if you want to add nodes to a group? Um, but you don't really care about how you put the node in a group. You could build that because group allows you to tell both stories at once. But um, what if you don't really care? So for example, if you have a website, like a newspaper with paid content, then if you put those nodes inside a group, you care about what nodes are in that group, in that paid section, because you can shield off access to it. So group allows you to tell both stories, or both at once, depending on how you configure it. So in order to explain that, I'll show you how entities are grouped. So suppose we have a group on the left of type redaction. By the way, I should have changed that because apparently that is a word that you don't really know all that well sometimes. A redaction is just a bunch of journalists. You know, drinking coffee, writing nonsense, all that shit. That's a redaction. Um, 
And, well, yeah, a Node article, I mean, you all know that. You've installed Drupal at least once, I guess. So um, how do we add <laughs> nodes into a group? It's by having this go-between entity called group content. So what, when I set the why or how something is in a group, that's actually what you configure on the group content. And if you want to know what, well, yeah, that's just the node on the right-hand side. So what group content is, is it's fieldable. So these are the fields I talked about. You don't want to know what that user on my gaming portal's account is, but you do want to know his gamer tag, so you'd configure that as a field on the group content, which is really easy to configure, by the way. Don't get scared by this. It's the only technical diagramish e thingy in there. So, and these vary per group type and per target entity. So this means that there is a unique group content entity, well, actually bundle, for the relationship between a redaction and an article. So if you have a page node, then we have this different group content entity, so it could have different fields. Um, so yeah, and it's also, it varies per plugin because it's managed by plugins. Um, don't get scared by that, it's this new whole Drupal 8 system, I don't expect you to know it, I will demo it in a second because it's really cool. But um, yeah, managed by plugins, uh, don't get scared, yeah, I'm gonna show a little developer phone here, so. This is what I mean by managed by plugins. This is all you need to add stuff to a group. You just have this one class extending the group content enabler base, which does what its name actually uh, uh, makes you think it does. It enables you to add content to a group. And you have a few keys that you can configure, and that's most that you need. And then you can still override the base class and stuff, but whatever. So I'm going to show you this, and I'm a really big fan of memes, so I put three in there. So yeah, whatever. Um, so let's have a demo. So we had those two stories, yeah. So the thing is that once you enable group, you get this extra icon at the top with two flurps. Um, and we have this demo where we have the gaming clan. So let's go to groups. I already configured a, a few things because I didn't want to bore you with me configuring all sorts of fields on group types and whatnot. So um, one thing you'll notice is a lot of modules split up their stuff into three sections. For instance, uh, nodes are under content, and node types are under structure, and then configuration for the module could be un under configuration. I thought, screw that, let's go with a different system, everything is under group. There will be nothing anywhere else, so you never have to worry about not finding something, it's all there. So I have uh, three groups here, but before we go into that, I'll show you the group types. So um, these are the group types, and <coughs> Everything that a group can do is configured on the group type, obviously, because they all inherit that set of rules. So these have a lot of things. You can put fields on them, but, and this is the main part, so for instance, for a clan, we have this plugin, because group memberships are just plugins. Um, as you can see, the group membership plugin is installed, and you can enforce your plugins. So for instance, this plugin allows you to add users to a group as members, but um, the small letters read that this will always be installed. If you add your own plugins, you can do that as well. If your module absolutely relies on it being installed in every group type, you can. Um, so I configured a few fields. I'm in the Call of Duty clan, right? So this is where you configure the fields on the relationship, on the group type. So I should have probably... Oh no, here we are, here we have to. I was just... Okay. So, um, yeah, do you teabag the people you should? What's your gamer tag? How many headshots do you score each game? What are your roles? So, let's have a look. Um, yeah, there's also other stuff on a group type because obviously OG and group, they all have <coughs> this permission system. So, this is what that looks like. You have this overview page. Every group type gets three roles out of the box. Um, anonymous, outsider, and member. They are explained at the top. It's pretty obvious. If you're an anonymous user on the whole website, you don't have an account. So obviously you want anonymous users to perhaps not be able to do stuff. For instance, join a group because then all the anonymous users would share that same membership. Then you have outsiders. Outsiders are people who do have a website account but are not part of the group. They're not members. And then you have members. Members like authenticated user. You can define your own extra roles, but everyone who's part of the group will always get the member role. It's just like that, so you can always just like authenticated user assign some common permissions here that they won't get. You'll notice that um, some of these permissions 
aren't available, you can also configure that. You can provide your own group permissions and say what type of roles they're available for. One thing to note is I have not added any permissions here and I still will be able to demo it. It's because I'm user one, obviously. I configured the second part of the demo, by the way. But it's also because everything you can do with a group is a group permission, except for two things. One of them is create a group, because how could we have permissions applied to a group if the group doesn't exist yet? So in order to create a group of a group type, that's a global permission. That's one of the only global permissions. The second global permission is the access bypass. Just like Node, I have a permission that allows you to bypass any access you want, so that you don't have to have administrators use the user one account, but you could have multiple administrators with their own account and still allow them to bypass all rules. Anytime you check for access on the group object with the has permission stuff, you don't need to account for that, group does it for you. So you can just check for the permission you're checking for. So, demo time. Um, we had two groups. And one of them was called The Pros, so Call of Duty Clan. And um, yeah, it's just got this description field that I added to it. Um, and you've got this block on the left-hand side, which is really cool because I've created a system or implemented a system that allows you to have blocks that only show up on group pages. So if I go to the home page, you'll notice that block isn't there. So, and this one just allows you to join the group. And when you join a group, you get to fill out the fields that were under membership. Now, just a note, out of the box, there are no fields. So you would still be presented with this page that says join group, but have no field, so it would be weird. Um, I plan on having a configurable message on there that you could show, or have you be able to skip this page if there are no fields? But, I mean, it's still an alpha, so give me some time, right? So um, if I want to join this, um, yeah, whatever, and how many headshots do you score? I mean, there is, yeah, of course, whatever. I don't need really care. So now I'm a part of this, yeah, and I get redirected to the actual group content entity now, but if I go back to the group. So I'm part of this group. That's basically it. If you go to the member section, remember I'm user one, you can see, um, you can see the members. You can also add members, and this is really cool because right now I joined it and I didn't get any role selection, right? But um, if you're an admin and you want to add members, there's this add button on the overview page. And then you actually get to select who you're adding to it. So I have this test user on the website. So there we go. And then I can assign roles to them. So you, as an admin, can actually see fields that someone can see when they join. Um, so yeah, that's just to show the cool stuff you can do with it. Um, but the other thing I wanted to demo, just to show that use case, is that we had uh, two groups. So here I asked about how many headshots you give and whatever. But we also have a Minecraft clan, which is like digital Lego for adults. <laughs> so if I wanted to join that, um, there's different fields. So members in the one type of group can have a totally different profile than in the other type of group. That's perfectly possible, and it doesn't really take all that long to configure. You just add those fields like you would add them to notes, and that's just a relationship. That was, that was part one of the demo. So now we have part two of the demo, and that is adding notes to a group, right? So suppose we have this press area, and it, it's a private section. So again, let me show you the configuration for that. So we have this private section, and if you go to available content, you'll see that I've actually installed a plugin here. I've just clicked on install for basic pages, so now we can add pages to groups of the type private section. Um, again, we can configure those fields, but as I told you before, it doesn't really matter if you want to add nodes to a group and you just want to shield them off, you don't really care about the relationship, but you could. So if for some reason you want someone who added a node to a group to um, assign a responsible person who would get fired if something was kinky in that node, then you, you could. Um, so yeah, anyways. I did assign some permissions here because I'm going to demo the private part of it. So uh, I allowed only members and editors to view this group. So this is just to show you that the permission system already works. Um, there is this little confusing part right here still that I'll explain in a second. Um, I allow editors to access the group node overview um, and members and editors can view private nodes, so nodes that are in the group, um, and they can view the relationship. 
these above ones are provided by default by the plugin that you can extend. I should have probably turned them off for group notes, but I actually like them there. I, I'm going to relabel them. Um, and these are defined by the group note plugin, and that those apply to the actual notes. So if we go to that group, it'll all become clear because I'm just rambling right now. So if we go to that group, we have this view, and this view would show which private pages are in the node, who created it, what time it was created on, who added it to the group. So the last two columns are the relationship, and the two columns before that are you know, just the node creation time. So you can have views that have data from both the relationship and from the entity that you're adding quite easily. It's really easy to configure, and the title of the node. So right now we have none, and if I have a private browser version and I want to view that group, you'll notice that I have no access because I didn't allow people to access that section unless they were members. So let's log in as test. Yeah, I think you can guess what that password was, right? So um, if we go there, then we can see the group because um, test was actually a member of the group. So, but if we manage these members, and we can see that I added test already, but if I edit test just to make him a basic member because I made him an editor already, if I just edit him, for instance, you'll notice that he had this ability to create a basic page because he was an editor, yeah, that's gone. So we can no longer create that. And now I'm going to show you something really cool something that I don't think anyone has ever done in Drupal 8 up until now. <coughs> there have been blog posts about it, but not the way I did it. So let's edit that guy again. Uh, so let's edit him again. And let's make him an editor so that we can show that he can create that as well. So um, what I showed you earlier was that you could add users to a group, right? And you were actually configuring that relationship, that group content. But for nodes, I don't see you guys wanting to first create the nodes globally and then add it to a group. That sucks, right? Because the period between having created the node and adding it to a group, the node's public. So you don't want that. You want to actually create that node inside a group, yeah? That's the case. So you're creating a basic page. And you could call it a uh, page demo and have some text in there. And then it has a button, say, continue to final step. And this step is the relationship page again. So if I were to configure fields on why you're adding that node to the group, that's this step. So you don't get access to slash node, slash, as, uh, slash add, slash page. You don't get access. You only get access to group slash the number of the group, and then you can create or add a page. So we don't have to have that security possibility of people being able to add nodes globally and then rely on a field that is enforced and has to have specific values. No, we just have this form wizard. And now I'm telling it to create that node in this group, and it's created. Again, uh, it's an alpha. Some redirects are a little bit wonky right now. So if we go to that, you can see that we have this uh, full page demo there. If we go to the home page of the group, then you can see that it was created on that date by whatever and whatever. But if I switch back to the other window and I go to that group, I have some more nodes. So if I add a node, so first let me show you. There is this node. This was, this was full page demo. I've got also some page created by test before. So if I want to add that node, and it was called some page, and yeah, there's no field, so there's no relationship data. And if I go back to that group, and you can see the difference. So both pages were created by test, but the second one was added by admin. So this is really cool. You can, you can really find out who did what and have views based on that. So that was uh, the second part of the demo to show you. By the way, both pages are now part of this group. So I can see this, uh, I can see this page. This is just that page. If I go to the private window, because I'm logged in as test and it's part of that group, I can see it. If I log out and I try to go there, yeah, no. So that works. 
So those are two modules um, that I provide with group, just basic group and group mode, because that is one of the most common use cases. I thought, you know what, I'm not going to depend on contract building that, I'll do it myself. Now, let's close this session. I, I did one last thing that I wanted to show you to blow your minds. Um, I did that just like right before I started. People in the room can testify. Um, so when I talked about plugins that enable you to add content to a group, let me demonstrate how easy it is to get started with developing for a group. So, holy shit, what is this? Oh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, that wasn't, okay, whatever. So, I created this little module. Suppose, um, because this is really cool, there's two aspects to it. Usually, you can only add an entity, a type of entity to a group like once. So, we're, I'm already adding users. So you'd expect that because I'm already adding users to groups as members, then, well, everyone else that wanted to do something with users is screwed. Well, that's not true because the plugin is one of the things that group content varies by. So I can create a second type of plugin that allows you to add users to a group as well, but just do different stuff with it. So for instance, the group membership plugin is what defines uh, what permission someone has, what roles he has, uh, stuff like that. But I could create this plugin, I hope you can all read this, that is called Notify and allows you to add users to a group as well. And the only thing that it would do is, for instance, give you a feelable relationship, the group content, that, it, uh, that allows you to send emails to them. So you could have members in a group with the group membership plugin, but also add members to a group and say, you know what, whenever we publish a page in this group, I want those people to be emailed, not the members, no, because some people may not want that. We'll have this opt-in system where people who do want to be notified can subscribe to this list. That's possible. I really hope this doesn't blow up because I did this like just now. But this is all the code you need. See, there's, there's nothing in there except for that one plugin. There's no code, it just inherits the group content enabler base. And yeah, there's an info and a module file. So I'm not, oh crap, that should be empty. So yeah, I just did that for a sec. So there's nothing in there. Well, there isn't anymore. So, um, of course, we need to enable that module, and it's down here. So, demo module, here we go. Please don't blow up. It shouldn't, but still, I mean, this is the part of a live demo that's actually live. The rest was prepared, so, okay, so this worked. Um, so, let's go to a group type. And, for instance, let's have that private section, that press area. Oh, crap. And... Let's go to the available content for that group type. And oh, hey, there's this new plugin here. I can have this group notify thingy and it lists that it also adds users. It's defined by the demo module and it's not installed. So let's install this. So bam, that, that's it. That's all there is. By the way, um, don't create an issue about this, please. In the issue queue, it says nothing to see here yet. Yeah, that, that's something I need to do still. I want those plugins to be configurable as well. Um, and so while that link install and uninstall right now just does that without anything else, both should be a form that allow you to configure the plugin um, because there's some really cool stuff that you can configure already. So I enabled this. So if I go and look at the permissions right now, then you can see that for the demo module, it automatically defined permissions to access the group notify overview page to uh, create group notify content whatever um, this is just the basic wording you can override all of those permission names in your plugin um, and this would just normally allow me to add users so I'm user one so fuck it I'm not going to configure this but um, the key was notify so I specified this path key so all the paths um, should start it's doing it again. So it should start with notify. So if I go to that group and I go to slash notify. So you'll notice that there's no tab here because uh, I cheated and for members and notes I created a tab because um, I want that to be configurable on the plugin. So I don't want a tab to be automatically generated for each plugin you enable because that would get really unwieldy. So I want, again, that to be configurable. So if you go to Notify, <coughs> it's 
So yeah, let's add a group notify. And you'll notice that if I start typing rubbish, it won't show anything. But if I start typing a username, hey, there we go. You can add a user. And you could add fields to that. That's how easy it is to create a plugin for group. Just, you know, a little bit of annotation and that's it. And you can have a million ways to add users to a group and they won't interfere. You can even have limits. So if I, I think I set one. So, yeah, so the entity cardinality, there's two cardinalities that you can specify, the group cardinality and the entity cardinality. So the entity cardinality is the amount of times you can add the same entity to a group. By default, it's unlimited. And the group cardinality is the amount of groups you can add that one entity to using that plugin. So here I set it to one. So if I try to add it again, and I try to add that again, then there we go. So that all works out of the box. Um, one of the things that is in the annotation right now is that cardinality. That one I expect to put on the configuration form so that it's not hard-coded because this is actually configuration, right? The type of entity you add, the bundle you add, that's all just what the plugin does. But this should be configurable. So this is something that I'll put in that configuration form. So, um, yeah, that was basically it. So going back to my slides, are there any questions? Yeah. I noted that uh, you also have a Drupal seven module which yeah. hasn't been updated for half a year. Uh, is it is there feature parity between the two versions? Well, there is a lot of feature parity because both uh, thrive on the idea that a group should be its own entity and that they should have all of their functionality on that group um, object. There is a lot of functionality similar. For instance, the um, the anonymous outsider and member ID is similar. The group ID is similar. However, this whole plugin stuff, yeah, that's not in Drupal 7. I, I didn't really bother backpointing that. Um, and the way group roles are added in Drupal 7 is a little differently. In Drupal 7, there is this little system that I had where you could add one group role that could apply to all group types, but I just tossed it out because it was confusing the hell out of people. So um, that's no longer in there. The reason Drupal 7 hasn't been updated for that long is because I was working on Drupal 8. I do plan to go over the issues that have been created for Drupal 7 after this. And one of my colleagues offered to help out with that because I can imagine I'll get a lot of issues for Drupal 8 as well. Um, but yeah, I'll make sure there's a list or a table that says Group 7 does this that no longer is available in Group 8, which is all the stuff that I, not all the stuff, but just the few bits that I thought would be too confusing or user unfriendly because I've learned a lot from creating the Drupal 7 version. And there will be a column saying, this is all new. This is cool stuff that you can do in Drupal 8 that you can't do in Gru uh, Group 7. So, but yeah, there is a lot of parity. Um, we even intend to create a migrate path from 7 to 8. But again, I mean, I worked my ass off to get this ready for Drupal Camp, so please give me some time. <laughs> but as you can see, it's already really stable and functional, right? The only reason that I tagged it alpha right now is so that if people come to me with a question saying, it, wouldn't it be cool if we could alter this data or configure this data that I can still add to the API? If I tagged the beta, I would feel really bad about changing the API because probably people would start building extensions and then, you know, flame me. But if it's tagged alpha, people understand, I guess. So, yeah. Uh, can you, I see you've got join the group as soon as the user does. Or can you disable that and make it just the admin can put somebody in the Yeah, group? yeah. Um, this is just a permission on the group. So if you go to a group type um, and you manage the permissions, then one of them is join group. So you can only give that to outsiders, obviously. But <coughs> if you disable that, then they won't see that join group button. And only managers can add people to that group. Well, um, no, the thing is that um, you'd probably want a module that does field permissions because these are just fields. They're, yeah. they're not shielded off. So you could probably manage that with a module that does field permissions. Yeah, but organic groups, again, it uses fields to do its magic, yeah, and that's sure. pretty weird. So, yeah. Um, I have a question about the, the structure. The first of all, I really like the, I think the module works 
has also feasibility, but it's a side standard. I think there could be a feasibility issue by deciding to put everything under one shop heading. Maybe. Yeah. Instead of putting the content under content and the structure under structure and the permissions under permissions. Because as a site builder, I'm going to end up searching for where are the things, why is this different than yeah. other modules. And if other modules follow your example, you're going to have some 20 points there up in the Yeah, in the I know. Menu so button. there's two yeah. reasons why I put it up there. I would really appeal to you as a site builder and as a documenter yeah. to follow these filter like structure maps. Yeah. Because it will really make it easier for everybody. Okay, I get that. Um, there's two reasons I put it up there. One of them is because I'm cocky, um, and the <laughs> other is, um, it is. So, um, and the other is that um, I, I know a lot of people expect um, content to be on the content, uh, configuration of bundles to be on their structure, and then configuration on the configuration. Um, the thing is that I couldn't really put groups on their content because even though an instance of a group is a sort of content, it doesn't really belong there. So I would have to create that group tab anyway. And then I figure if I'm doing that and people install the module and the first thing they'll notice is that there's this extra button at the top, then let's just keep them there. Let's just have everything there. If that doesn't work out, if I get a lot of complaints about that, I will split it up and move it. I have no issues with that. But I figured it would be cool to just have it in one place so that people can, you know, whenever they need to do something to a group, like configure a new permission, uh, enable a new content plugin, whatever, they just click at the top on groups and get started. That, that would feel a lot more easier to me to be one click away from the whole page where I can manage everything. It's kind of like the dashboard module in Drupal 7. Everything is in one place. I like that. Apparently some people didn't because I think it got kicked out of core. I don't know. But yeah. So anyone else? Yeah, like so you have menus for groups. Yeah, this is one of the things that I can demo. Um, this is really cool. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you'll notice that I'm really excited because I've created some really cool shit here. Um, but let's see, where is the... So yeah, we have this group operations block, right? So um, when you create a block in Drupal, by default, it doesn't require a context. Well, that is in Drupal 8, right? But now in Drupal 8, you can have blocks that require a context. So if I go to group, source, plugin, block. So I've created this context. And um, this is the uh, group context that reads a group from the URL. So if you wanted to have a module that has menus for groups, all you would need to do is create a block that uses that group context because the block that you saw earlier that allowed you to create a node in a group or that allowed you to join or leave a group, that is just this block that you're seeing right here. And the cool thing is that, um, just like node types, you can even restrict on what types they can be seen. So if you just want one of the group types to have menus but the other is stone, then just create a block that uses that context plugin. Just, you know, cheat, look at my code, it's already in there, just copy paste that and start from there. And then just, you know, say it, it's only available for Minecraft class. So, anyone else? Yeah. So, so the, originally in, in, in organic groups, there was like a, it was the content type and it was a whole separate thing and then they moved to menus and it didn't work out. It turned out that people wanted to be able to do things like flags together with organic groups. Yeah. Yeah. And then they moved them over. Especially in Drupal 8. Um, one of the reasons I think that um, organic groups went that way was entities were only really properly added in Drupal 7 by the Entity API module. And a lot of people didn't bother implementing that because even though C tools and Entity API is great, there's like very little documentation. And the documentation that does get shipped with it is like outdated by five years or something. Um, so that's in my opinion, the reason why they didn't do it, because OG has been around since 4.6, so they probably tried um, like creating their own sort of entity, but try doing that in Drupal 4.6 where every module is aimed at nodes. That's a hell, right? But they then just start, I'm bashing OG now, I don't want to do this, but they just started porting it version after version after version and just copy-pasting their code and 
seeing what needed to be updated and kept that same content, um, kept that same ID behind it. But every module, as of Drupal 7, the better modules, all focus on entities like entity view mode, C tools, panels, they can all use entities. Group is an entity, and especially in Drupal 8, everything is an entity now. So a module like flag would no longer target just nodes, it would target entities, and group is one. So you just add a flag field to a group and be done with it. Anyone else? So the question is, you know, I love your module and I'm using it on a live site. If I'm an editor yeah. and I'm looking after Call of Duty fans, Minecraft fans, yeah. can I have one article in both those groups? Yeah. And when I put it into one group, it's no longer visible to the other people. So how do I get hold of it to put it into the... Yeah, I know, I know. So what you're saying is that... What happens when I change it to one group and not to the other? Yeah, so what you're saying is that if you have a global article and you put it in one group, yeah. then it gets shielded off. And then if you try to put it in a different group, then they can see that, right? Yeah. So yeah, what you'd need to do, and this is actually a security issue that is by design, is that you don't want people to add nodes to their group that they shouldn't be able to add. So if they don't have access to it, then they shouldn't be able to add it to their group. So what you'd need to do is configure it so that they become members of that other group where that node resides in, and then they will be able to see it in the autocomplete and add it to their group. That's the solution I would say works out of the box, as in through the UI. You could also do, do it through code or whatever, but this is how it would work through the UI, and this is how it needs to work through the UI, so that people cannot have autocompletes that show nodes that they shouldn't be able to see because that's a security issue. And is there a way for me to see what other group that piece of content is in? Yeah. Um, if I'm going to change that article, then I can alert the other group members that I want to yeah. change that content. Um, I'll quickly demo this before I <coughs> go to the next question. Um, I, I earlier had that view, right? So this is really easy. So group supports views. There's a few plugins that I want to create, but the thing is, because I don't have anything custom, I don't have a custom entity reference field like OG in Drupal 8 will have, I don't have anything weird going on, so there is view support for like 99% of it out of the box, because I'm not doing anything weird to entities. So, if I want to have a group contents entity, and uh, for instance, of the type, let's say, a basic page in a private section, so, and let's call it this, I don't get, I don't care. So you want to see the groups that those pieces of content are part of, yeah? So right now we have a view of the relationship. So what we want to do is we want to see the node titles probably and the group titles. So you just add a relationship to the content that you add. So the entity to add to the group, this will be the node. And you add one to the group containing the entity. And this one is for the content, so let's give it an easier to read title. And this one is for the group, let's require it as well, and let's give it the group title. There we go. And then if we, yeah, let's remove this field because group content entities don't have that. Uh, so let's add the group title. And let's add the node title which is, oh yeah, I always hate the fact that I call it content, if you know it's a note, but it's weird, but I guess for site building it makes sense, so. So yeah, we have two title fields. Uh, let's create a label for this, say notes. Let's create a label for this, same group, apply. So we can see for every node, what group it is in, and if it were in an extra group, you'd see that as well, because it's so easy to use the group module with views. I did that this morning, and I thought it was cool, so I wanted to ask a question, so you could demonstrate it. Oh, okay, <laughs> thanks for that. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so, yeah. It's really, it's really, it's really, really useful. So, I've already got Femboy.